Hello everyone. Welcome to Groundwater Hydrology and Management, V3, Lecture 4 of the NPTEL series. In this week, we have been looking at the definitions of aquifer, how groundwater gets into the aquifer, and the key aquifers in India. Especially in the last lecture, we looked at the connection between the aquifer formation and how it is related to rainfall, river discharge, and also the geology, most importantly, the geology of the location. We will continue our discussion on the groundwater resources in India uh, to strive the fact that groundwater has become one of the most, if not the most important water resource. Uh, let's look at the statistics as per the Central Water Commission, CWC. Uh, the annual water availability is around 1,869 billion cubic meters per year, uh, of which usable water is uh, lesser than that at 1,123 cubic, uh, billion cubic uh, meters per year. And the surface water contribution to that total is 690, whereas groundwater is 433 billion cubic per meter per year respectively. So the groundwater is almost very, very near to the surface water and it cannot be neglected. That is the driving fact from this set. So how do we manage groundwater? How do we monitor groundwater? So the depth to groundwater level is uh, monitored before the monsoon and after the monsoon. Uh, if you take, for example, this image, a pre-monsoon level uh, from the Central Groundwater Board uh, Data Archive, uh, what does it tell you? It tells you how deep you have to go to access the groundwater. Okay, look at the units. Uh, the unit says depth to water level meters BGL, which means below ground level. So if your ground is this, your, your well is inside the ground. So how deep do you have to go under the ground or below the ground to access groundwater? And so if you have a water level before the monsoon, if you have these data before the monsoon, it clearly tells you how uh, stressed a location is because only before the monsoon, you are more dependent on the groundwater. Once where there's monsoon, the three months of good rainfall uh, and soil moisture, you won't need uh, your groundwater because you have surface water, dam, rivers, etc., lakes, ponds, all the surface waters, uh, could be used, but uh, groundwater plays a key role in the pre-monsoon season. So just before the monsoon, two, three months. So if you look at this image 2014, uh, you could see that the groundwater uh, levels are very, very concerning or it is deep uh, in Rajasthan uh, and most of the central India where we have hard complex uh, hard rock aquifers. Uh, and then uh, it is uh, almost more than 40 meters below the ground. Think about how much energy you have to spend to take the water out uh, and how much water is it going to be. So let's take a contrast. This Rajasthan area has each well, you have to go at least 40 meters to access groundwater. However, in the Ganges Basin region and along the coastal regions, the blue color, you can get it within two meters within two meters, the Brahmaputra region, etc. So you can easily take groundwater here, less energy, less dependency. Whereas here where there's a lot of agriculture activity, it uh, is very, very low. So your pre-monsoon water level is a very good indicator of where the groundwater stress is and where you have to put some measurements at once. The next color you see is uh, two to five meters below groundwater and most of India is covered with it, uh, followed by five to 10 and 10 to 20. Okay, uh, after that, the hilly areas are in the Kashmir uh, region um, and your uh, Northeastern region. Not much data is available also here. So you can uh, say safely that the groundwater use is negligible in those areas. So based on this groundwater level, so now the Central Groundwater Board is taking the water level um, and they take it in four times a year. Okay, so one is your pre-monsoon, 
your post monsoon and then you have your winter and then your summer spring summer uh, could be uh, correlated so uh, this four times a year actually gives you a good picture of the spatial and temporal trend of groundwater levels so once you have the levels, uh, you have a pre-monsoon and a post-monsoon. So uh, for example, in 2014, you have the pre-monsoon level. What is the water that has been extracted before the pre-monsoon level? It is a monsoon of 2013, not 2014. Okay, so let's put some time here. Pre-monsoon of 2014 could be your April, May of 2014. So what is the monsoon water that comes into the aquifer that this, this pre-monsoon used? It is the monsoon of the previous year, 2013, June, July, August, um, let's say September. September is the peak uh, monsoon month, uh, for example. So from September up to your summer is your peak monsoon has come, your recharge has happened and all the discharges happened which means you're taking out groundwater. Using this data, you will look at some indexes that is made by the Central Groundwater Board, which is given here. Okay, this is a, a comparative status of the groundwater development in India. Uh, and if the level of groundwater uh, is uh, zero to 70%, which means annually or during a water year, you're taking 70% of your groundwater. So if you take 70% of your groundwater, not more than that, it's considered safe. Um, explanation is areas which have groundwater potential for further development. You are safe, but you can still push the groundwater to take more water for economic benefits and agricultural benefits. So if you have a container of uh, your aquifer, uh, your aquifer is containing groundwater, uh, and only 70% is used, you can have some measurements uh, and some interventions to further use, like for example, expansion of agriculture, different high cash crops, those can be introduced there in a safe and sustainable manner. If you look at the 70 to 90%, uh, which means almost 100%, uh, almost total of the groundwater has been extracted, uh, those are uh, called semi-critical um, and you have to be very cautious around it. You have to be very cautious in taking further water because you might easily slip in the 90 to 100%. So you have to be careful. Um, a little bit uh, recommendation uh, is given for further development, but very cautiously. Let's go to the 90 to 100%, which is called the critical. Uh, the critical uh, is, is kind of concerning because you are totally depleting your aquifer. You are taking all the storage out and keeping it blank. So if you keep the storage blank, the next year, if it is a drought year, will also face consequences. So areas which need intensive monitoring and evaluation for further groundwater development. So even if you want to push it, uh, there has to be in, uh, extensive uh, monitoring and evaluation um, first to monitor, to manage, uh, and if the groundwater situation is better, then you can add more uh, interventions for extracting the groundwater, industry, etc. But 90 to 100% is critical, so you, you better stop extracting more water. What do you do when it becomes more than 100%? You're already eating out all the groundwater that you stored. You're already taking out all the groundwater and more, which means you're taking the past groundwater. Uh, this is very, very concerning. Areas where for future groundwater development is linked with water conservation measures. So you, you can only access groundwater if you have good conservation measures. Otherwise, it's better not to use these groundwater resources, which is uh, more than critical. Okay. Let's see how these different indexes fared, how many number of districts or percentage of districts um, uh, in, in the, from 1995 to 2011. That gives you a good temporal trend of how these indicators changed. Okay, In 1995, you have 92% um, of districts in the safe, 4% uh, in uh, semi-critical, 1% critical, and 100% over-exploited uh, was 3, uh, more than 100%. Uh, 
So uh, most of your aquifers were safe in 1995. So everyone is happy. Uh, you can go along and do more groundwater depletion. Uh, but then in 2003, uh, 92 became 73. Uh, but more concerning is that most of the uh, groundwater that uh, was safe uh, moved down, trickled down into the critical and more uh, probably over exploited condition. Look at the years, it is almost uh, nine to 10 years. So within that 10 year frame, uh, we have pushed uh, or uh, stressed more groundwater resources uh, that more of them are now in the critical and overexploited. Fast forward another five years, uh, your numbers don't change much except you lost one more percentage of your safe aquifers and then another uh, two years on uh, you are continuously losing your uh, districts, percentage of districts uh, that are safe. Uh, and they're the, so if the safe converts to semi-critical or critical, at least there is some um, uh, you know hope that you could re, uh, conserve the groundwater. The problem is most of them are ending up in your overexploited. The overexploited is going up, uh, and that is a very big concern because not only are you depleting the groundwater aquifer uh, as critical and semi-critical, uh, but you are overexploiting the groundwater aquifer. So that uh, needs uh, serious interventions and thoughts to conserve uh, groundwater better. Okay, so uh, we saw the depth to water level in 2014, and this is the uh, latest uh, version uh, that we have. It is the 2020 um, groundwater um, scenario. What do we see here is most of the regions in 2014 that were red are still red. Uh, which means it takes more than 40 meters below groundwater uh, level, uh, ground level to access the groundwater, to touch the groundwater surface. However, the those regions, the central regions that were green in 2014 have turned now yellow and pink, which is really concerning. The green is two to five, whereas yellow is five to 10 and 10 to 20 for pink. So most of the regions are converting into the pink uh, color, uh, thereby explaining that there is more um, critical and semi-critical use of groundwater. Mm. And in most regions over exploited. You can see Rajasthan is, is not as bad as it was earlier uh, in terms of groundwater depletion. Still, there is a lot of red color a lot of groundwater uh, depth has to be um, covered to access the water levels. Moving on, let's see in 2011 how the percentage uh, was at state level. So different states uh, access groundwater differently. Uh, the, the chief crops that they grow is different, the industrial demand is different, and the domestic demand is different. So based on these different demand status, the groundwater uh, development is also different. So if you look at it here, um, uh, the most concerning is if it goes above 100%, always remember above 100% is over-exploited, 90 to 100 is uh, semi-critical, and then you have critical um, uh, at 50 to 70, those kind of things. So uh, be very careful when it touches 90 to anywhere above 100, okay? Uh, so if you look at the numbers, Delhi uh, has groundwater exploitation much, much higher than the annual recharge, 140%, uh, which means it's more than the um, groundwater that is recharged. And some measurements have to be taken urgently which is the uh, most uh, worst case scenario is uh, your uh, highest groundwater development is in Punjab, 172 and Rajasthan. So the red region that you saw uh, is still uh, showcasing that it is a, uh, the percentage of development is the highest um, and uh, groundwater level also is declining uh, along with it, the um, uh, recharge or how much you use annually is also increasing. The other um, agricultural states 
uh, which are of concern uh, is Gujarat, Karnataka, um, and um, Puducherry at 90%, Tamil Nadu 77%, Uttar Pradesh. Uh, all these are above uh, 70, uh, have to be very cautious. So 0 to 70 is safe, uh, but once you get into the 70s, it becomes semi-critical and then critical and then over-exploited. So it is very important to uh, stop uh, the current uh, scenario of use groundwater use and focus more on conservation and other activities. This is also visually represented. So if you put it visually, it makes more sense. Uh, that is why uh, always you should think about doing it as a map rather than as a table. Uh, here you have the over-exploited red regions, mostly in Rajasthan, Punjab, uh, Delhi, um, and Haryana. So those clusters are very uh, close to each other, uh, neighboring um, uh, states. And uh, what you see here is uh, uh, a localized groundwater depletion scenario. Uh, which has been spreading across this Rajasthan, Haryana, Punjab region. Um, Delhi could be explained because of the population that they have uh, and the lifestyle uh, to support the population. But uh, Rajasthan, Gujarat, um, and all the other regions which are predominantly agriculture oriented should wake up. They should wake up uh, and do something to uh, slowly, um, you know, uh, stop the current groundwater use, reduce the current groundwater use, uh, and then uh, have better management plans. If you look at the central uh, region, uh, most of it is uh, in the safe, uh, whereas this is the 2011. Um, this is not the recent one, but I'm just comparing the uh, two uh, because of the data we have for percentage development. Um, and then if you look at the uh, southern regions of uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, Andhra, Karnataka, Telangana, Kerala, uh, you do have a lot of uh, over-exploited scenarios. Most of them would concentrate on uh, the um, um, urban cities like Bangalore uh, and uh, agricultural areas in Andhra and Karnataka. Uh, but uh, the, the give and take uh, from here is, uh, there is multiple uses for groundwater. Uh, and if we don't agree to reduce it below the over-exploited condition, which is uh, below the 100% of recharge, then we cannot sustain the groundwater use for a long time. So it is uh, imperative uh, to do this. So what are the key reasons? Um, the reasons is, as I said <coughs> in my introduction slides, Groundwater is uh, mostly used for agriculture uh, and agricultural productivity demands a lot of groundwater, uh, any water, but uh, specifically groundwater during the rabi season uh, where there is no monsoon. Uh, so if you look at this figure, the first figure by uh, Professor Shah, uh, you could see that the uh, uh, surface water use has been decreasing uh, and um, uh, the uh, groundwater use has been increasing, right? Uh, they fluctuate, uh, they change the directions almost 1980s. Uh, you see that the uh, surface water storage um, uh, use has become down, whereas your groundwater use has become up. The surface water structures are also not less, um, <coughs> not maintained well. Uh, and that uh, leads to more uh, groundwater access uh, and because people have better um, engineering concepts to access the groundwater. <laughs> the other figure, which is very interesting from the agriculture statistics um, uh, in 2014, uh, is the number of tube wells or wells that uh, use or create access to groundwater. All of them have skyrocketed after the 1960s. So around 1960s, you have more number of tube wells coming up. Tube wells access both the shallow and the uh, deep aquifers. They access both the confined and the unconfined aquifers. So all the groundwater is being uh, quickly uh, taken out of the system for agricultural use. Uh, however, the canals use has stagnated. Uh, your tank irrigation has almost come down um, from the initial use, uh, whereas your wells and tube wells are increasing. 
is this a sustainable sign uh, for agriculture? No, it's not. Uh, because like any other natural resource, uh, we will run out of groundwater if we don't manage it well. Uh, how, uh, when and why does this happen? Uh, this all happens uh, mostly um, uh, in the uh, pre-monsoon season because in the Rabi, they use uh, your rainfall for uh, irrigation, but most of it is uh, in the pre-monsoon season. And uh, that is why uh, the Central Groundwater Board takes the pre-monsoon and the monsoon data to make these maps. Uh, the maps look really informative, but what are the policies that are associated with these kind of images are still um, highly like We don't see much happening. Uh, otherwise, uh, the groundwater levels could have come down uh, or, or recharge has could have been increased, but we don't see that uh, in general. In general, the groundwater levels are continuing to decline um, and uh, they are not uh, sustainable. With this, uh, I would end the uh, week uh, three with uh, a recap. So in week three, we discussed about the groundwater hydrology. What do you mean by groundwater hydrology? Um, what are the different components in the groundwater hydrology explanation? Uh, we looked at a zone of aeration, zone of uh, saturation, uh, how water moves from the surface into the soil profile uh, and the rock matrix. Uh, we discussed about the uh, porosity being one of the key factors where water uh, gets into the system and stays there. Um, and uh, with the fact that most regions with less permeability and porosity cannot support groundwater activities. We looked at different components of groundwater. Uh, especially the recharge and discharge and we looked at how it is bound by time which means uh, how uh, long does it take for certain aquifers to um, uh, recharge and discharge water along with that we looked uh, at the definition of aquifers uh, first we defined what an aquifer is and what constitutes an aquifer uh, an aquifer is made of uh, your uh, solid particles a soil rock uh, matrix uh, along with that uh, the groundwater um, so uh, there are multiple multiple uh, dependencies of this uh, aquifer so how it is it is uh, developed or created and the most important one is the solid material which comes from the geology so geology pay, plays a very vital role in uh, the formation of an aquifer. Uh, and there are multiple aquifers uh, across the globe. In India, two major aquifers we recall. Um, uh, one is your hard rock aquifers and then the other is your alluvial aquifers. The hard rock aquifers are mostly in the uh, unconsolidated, uh, semi-consolidated uh, formations. Uh, whereas your uh, alluvial aquifers are all in the unconsolidated, which means there's a lot of water that recharges uh, comparatively and a lot of water can be uh, taken out for discharge. We also looked at uh, how a well is placed and the potentiometric and water table concepts. Uh, we looked at uh, differences between alluvial um, uh, and um, metamorphic rocks, uh, aquifers, etc. Uh, we also plotted uh, uh, the um, river networks along with the aquifer storage units to showcase that um, uh, we can explain the formation of these aquifers from water. Okay, so the water can give back to the groundwater. But in our case, uh, since there is no active live uh, groundwater component uh, discussed, uh, we did show that the aquifers can lead to better groundwater management uh, by giving water to the uh, hydrological springs, uh, waterfalls and rivers, uh, and vice versa can also happen depending on where the water table is. We defined the high potential to low potential concept for groundwater. Uh, and with this, uh, I think we covered most of the uh, components for groundwater. And in the next class, we will slowly introduce 
uh, how do you document the flow between two points, uh, both in the unconfined and the confined aquifer. With this, uh, I'd like to take a uh, leave from you. Uh, uh, we have finished uh, week three successfully uh, and we will soon start week four.